Hello everyone and welcome to this webinar. My name is Michael Evangelista and I will be your moderator for today. Just a few reminders that you are in listen-only mode to avoid unnecessary background noise. However, you can type in your questions anytime you want in the questions box and those questions will be answered by our panelists in a Q&A segment. The recording and certificate of this webinar will be sent out in two days' time and our topic for today is about the automated distance relay level one. And it is uh, a pre-recorded webinar from the Middle East team. So without any further ado, let's start this webinar, Grace. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Welcome to, the, uh, to MEGA's monthly webinar series. Today's topic will be um, Introduction to Automated Distance Relay Testing, Level 1. You can submit questions at any time during the presentation by typing in the box and I will read the questions out during the Q&A segment at the end of the webinar. Remember, you can ask questions at any time during the presentation, and they'll be answered towards the end of the webinar uh, during the Q&A session. Our presenter today is Murtada Abu Rahi, and uh, he is the technical and sales engineer. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Thank you for joining us today, Murtada. Assalamu uh, alaikum. Good afternoon for everybody. And I wish that you will get the most what you need from today's webinar. And if you need any future training or anything, you can contact us at any time. So today, our topic, as Ali mentioned, that we will talk about the distance relay, so automated testing of uh, distance relay. We have another level that will come after a few months that will be also very interesting because it will have the other functions of the distance relay. So today's topic is uh, we are going to cover, uh, in general, the transmission line. So we should know about the transmission line and the distance protection and the difference between the commissioning and maintenance. And then we'll go through the software and we'll open the software and do try to do some, you know, some some practical testing of the of the software itself. Okay, so the transmission line. Everybody knows that the transmission line, which is transmit the power from one point to one point, which is usually in the towers. But the thing is that, is this transmission line uh, short or long or medium and the voltage level? And how to differentiate and how to know this, this transmission line is really uh, carrying a huge power or not? This all, always we are seeing in the, in the uh, you know, in the runways or let's say in the highway, the transmission line, but we never know is this really a 400 kV or even 20 kV so that's that's the thing but the the, the main idea is to transmit as i said a power from one point to another point and as a definition is the uh, transmission line or the definition of transmission line should work when the voltage level is 66 kV but in some cases you can see even 11 kV which is which is not considered as transmission line and you will never have or let's say rarely you will have for example distance relay uh, on an overhead line of 13.8 and that's against even the uh, classification of the transmission lines but that's available yes and maybe no so this is what we usually see in the highways or whatever we are in the substation transmission lines but now we are talking about the introduction about them and then understanding is this really a 400 kV or let's say 60 kV transmission line and that's defined by the two things actually so the height of the tower and even the insulator used so the insulator used when you see in the left side the 400 kV or 500 kV it's already a big insulator while in the 60 kV is very small in the insulator so there is two things defining it. So the height of the <coughs> tower and then the insulator or insulation insulators used for carrying the conductors. <coughs> and then how to say this is a short or a medium or a long line. Now this is a lot of questions comes here when we can define it. So a lot of things are being asked 
and a lot of studies being done. Actually, if you say there are so, so many research. So, but in general, the conclusion is that when it is less than 80 kilometers, this will be will be considered as a short transmission line. So anything below 80 is a short. Anything between 80 to 120 will be medium, and more than 120, that will be a, a long line. And the, as I said, it's not only depending on this. Actually, it's not depending only in the length, but it depends also on other two factors. And that is the uh, source of line impedance and nominal, nominal voltage. So sometimes you will see like a, a 60 kV and sometimes it's 400 kV. But the source of line impedance ratio is very, very important also to consider it as a short, medium, or long. And there is a calculation only for that. And it is really different. It's very interesting to know it, but we have no time now to explain it. But it's good to even when you do some research or something in the uh, internet, you can find a lot of information regarding the calculation. And uh, briefly, it is calculating the wavelength from one station to another station. There is a lot of calculation to get it. So, and then you will get something like if it is short line, it will be greater than four. It's medium, it will be like from four or more than 0.5 or less than 0.5. It is long line. So this is this is different calculation and consideration about the line length calculation. And then because of the transmission line, and I said if it's short or medium or long, then we have to put some kind of protection. And the most common protection for the transmission line is the distance relay. Uh, some people say, what about line differential? Yes, line differential is there. And line differential will uh, usually you know, uh, protect 100% of the line, but we are talking about distance protection, which is the main thing our, of our topic today. So this uh, distance relay is basically a relay that can measure the impedance of the line by predefined setting. And this setting comes from the line calculation, as I said before. So the line calculation, which will give, a, give, give us the uh, the, 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 the line impedance, then we can calculate and set up our relay to trip during any fault inside the line or characteristic of the line. Uh, and <clears throat> from time to time, or let's say from all days up to now, a lot of changes comes to the characteristics. So starting from Moho at, the, at those days, and then offset Moho, when we said offset moho because they want to protect backwards or let's say in the bus side while the moho they will they will ignore the bus side and then we come with the quad tomato a lot of things from european side so a lot of development from long time let's say 50 years or more now up to now what we end up now with a lot of things now there are two different philosophy u.s philosophy and european philosophy and both are different but both are working very good so this is some of the kinds that we use, like the, for the impedance, Omoho type or offset, and then even the uh, quad. And even we have more than this, which has been de developed during the, the, uh, the years, which I will come through them now. So this is another example of Moho and how we do the calculation about Moho and the line, the line angle and other things. Now, the quad came after that and basically from Europe, and it's very good and this is the commonly used i believe now everywhere even in middle east but this is something that also was developed at that time which is if you see that we have even three types and those are three types we were using before but it came for a short time for some duration for some specific thing and then it stops after that and there is a calculation based on that that's why it was for its time and then when the time development comes it's been changed and that's why everybody now goes to uh, quad now there are a lot of information about here also and some of them even not used in usa and only one type was used in usa which is the the lens type which was used there uh, and because of this zone and zone and zone and zone reaches there should be also uh, 
some kind of of uh, coordination. Now, for example, if I have relay in station A, and then we are protecting the line, uh, we cannot protect, of course, 100% of the line because of the calculation error, because of CTM VT error. That's why usually we set it to 80% as a typical. And this 80% will not cover the other 20%. That's why we have the other zone covering it. And then we'll talk about maybe later about the zone communication, which is making it 100%. And then we have zone two and zone three, and basically zone two and zone three are backup. If there is a failure in station B that the relay didn't operate, so relay A will do the isolation. If uh, relay number in station B relay fails to operate or anything, so it's only a backup zones, and that can be used also for other. Uh, for other distance function or protection function, supported function like SOTF when we maybe talk about it in the our next webinar. So there is a time, there is a zone of protection and these zones are coordinated with time. And this is where we'll have, we'll have the uh, zones. As I said, we usually set, it, set up zone one for uh, the uh, for 80% because of the error, and then zone two will go 120%, and this 20% will be from the shortest line in the other station. So we usually choose the shortest line and then do calculation from the other station. And zone three will be like 150%. And this all coordinated by the time, and the time there will be different time sitting, and this calculation also have to be well coordinated with the other line protection, so there will not be a conflict or uh, mistripping, or let's say false tripping because of the time coordination. Uh, <laughs> uh, now, why we are doing this? Now, commissioning test is always having, uh, let's say, the full test of the protection system. So the protection system, usually when you install the relay, you need to verify that everything is working right, that all the inputs, outputs are working right, all the functions are working right, and then the scheme, the most important thing is the scheme. So the CTR coming right, the VT coming right, the tripping is going right. So this is being done at once during commissioning to verify that everything is 100% working perfectly. And then after that, you can energize the station, but even after energizing, you may find some issues that's being left during commissioning or not tested, and then that's why will come the maintenance afterwards. Now, the maintenance, the main thing of the maintenance that you will do, we'll do all, always uh, maintenance to verify that the relay or auto protection relay is still healthy. And this is when we say still healthy, meaning that it's reading right and then giving the output right according to its setting. The testing will be very minimum compared to the commissioning test. But because of this, of because of configuration or configuration being changed or something being changed, then you can discover it very easy during the maintenance. Now, again, the maintenance is actually classified in so many things. And the, I'll just talk about some of them, which is the preventive maintenance, which is time-based. And this is the most common thing everybody is using that every three years do the maintenance. And that's what we call preventive maintenance time-based, which is always, or everybody is using it. And then if you find something or there is a problem during, during these, these three years, this is what we call corrective maintenance, that you do a correction where the equipment failed or equipment that got something. That's what we call a corrective maintenance. Usually preventive maintenance will be there. If you find a problem, then you will change it to corrective. Or corrective can come if there is a failure directly. But now everybody is talking about the condition-based maintenance, which is CPM, and this is actually very good also. And this is something that is, uh, I think the best for the numerical even protection relays nowadays. And that's actually performing uh, a very fast test and check the indication. If you have some indication of error, indication of anything, and then you can do the maintenance. Otherwise, you don't need to do a maintenance from time to time, take the equipment out, take an outage, and then you have problem with your KPI. So it's different thing, different philosophy, 
all of them are working perfect. It depends on utility and what they need to do. And then how to do all of those tests? Of course, by testing it with different kind of protection, test equipment, which is Miguel providing for the year. So we have a lot of equipment. We have the Freya series, Smart series, and then we have even the the Sverka 900 series. Our topic today will cover since automated. We'll do it with the with the Freya and Smart software, which we call it RTMS. Now I'll just open directly the software so that you can see it instead of you know doing it through the presentation. So now the software, first of all, can be downloaded from the website, which is called PowerDB.com. When you go to PowerDB.com, you can just click on the downloads. When you click on the download area, you will see the latest version of the PowerDB. So we have the latest version of the PowerDB that you can install in your laptop. And this is free of charge, of course, with the light, the light version and can operate with uh, all the devices. And you can do it as simulation board. And then this is onboard. This is used whenever you are having a STVI in case of smart or Freya in board screen. You can even, you know, update it to the latest one. That is for, for you, that's what you can do. But also you can do the same thing from Mega website. If you register inside, you do the login, go to the software downloading, can download from here. So there is two options to download the software. After downloading the software and running the software, you'll have it something like this, and that's PowerDB. And this is a combination of so many softwares. Uh, Mega trying to bring everything, most of the equipment, uh, equipment software under one software. Now, when you click on your uh, Freya or Smart, they will run both the same software, which we call the RTMS. Now, we'll run it in the simulating mode so that you can see how we'll do some kind of, uh, uh, you know, testing of this test release here. So after, uh, you know, clicking on the software, software should start, and then we can choose a simulation mode. I just started to install it. So first installation will take usually some time until it uh, works. So that's usually over there. So when you do the first installation, it'll take time until you, you know, start the software. While it is starting, then I'll just go back to the presentation, maybe speak over there. Let's, let me see it. Let's restart the software maybe. The latest software called 11.2, and that's what the one I'm going to work, and I will work with the light version as well. So we'll go with simulation, and then when we simulate the device, you will have the general screen pops up directly. Now, this is there is a lot of new features here that maybe you did not see it before. Like for example, we can now import the relay setting from the main page over here without going inside. And uh, we can do a test plan and from the test plan, we can do whatever we need by adding them here. For example, if we are working with any kind of relay, you just click over here, choose the relay type you have. And then for example, if the Siemens relay, if it is 7 is A522, and you have the relay, you can import the file, and then you can do the testing automatically. Uh, that is that is one thing, okay. And there are some other features that we added over here, like for the ramping, we have advanced now ramping over there. We have unknown impedance over here that we speak about. And then we have also something like measurement test, which we will do, usually we can do, at the first of each test. And we can have also some other fa other facility by doing direct communication with some types of the relays. Now, starting from general screen, as we indicate over there that we can do also impedance from general screen. So what kind of test we can do? Usually, when we do any kind of test, we want to do either ramping to make sure that tripping is right, the zone boundary, 
or we want to do a timing to make sure that we are inside the zone or not. So both are applicable over here. So by choosing the calculator, you choose the impedance mode over here, and then the fault type you want. Let's say I want to do it three-phase fault, and uh, you want to constant current or constant voltage or constant Z, whatever we need. And let's say that my current is one. Now my impedance will be like 20 ohms, and my line angle is 80. Then when you click yes, it will directly, if you see, the values are based over here. Not only that, and you can see the impedance value and the angle over here. Now, the good thing is here that we want to, as I said, we want to just verify. So when we want to verify, we just start the injection over here, and then we can include the three channels in ramping since we are in three phase. And then when we change, we can see that the impedance is changing same time. You just check that our uh, relay is operating right or wrong. And we can change the angle, of course, by just clicking over here and put in 90 degree equal all, and then we have it at 90, and then we are doing the same thing. You want to do a lot of a lot of things is, is possible now with the new actually software. That is to do a verification, for example, of relay boundary or whatever manually. And this is can be done manually from the screen itself. Now, if we are want to do a timing test for the relay, it's also still the same. So we go back to the calculator, and then we can say our pre-fault, whatever we have over here, fault will have it like 15 now, and instead of three phase, we'll go to phase to phase. And now we change it to phase to phase, and this is my fault. So my pre-fault is zero, and then we can give pre-fault timing over here, and that is my fault, which is coming the same as we said. And now from here we can play, and when we play we can have the default value for two seconds. After the two seconds it will go and trip and give me the correct time. From here we can verify the zones and the zones if they are right or wrong as per the setting. This is very quick check manually that you can do everything. And this is all from the Freya front side. You don't need even a laptop to do that. And this is very good also, not only for that, actually for understanding, you know, when we go to automatic testing, the, the, the software will do all and everything without knowing why I'm getting this, why I'm getting this in the, uh, at the 45 degrees. So when you do calculation outside or do it by the calculator and paste it over here, you'll get to know more about the relay and relay zones and relay reaches. Now, for example, when we go back to the calculator, and then we go face A to ground, something will come like the compensation, which is the grounding factor. And this is something also very important to know. And, and then according to the relay, we can have this grounding factor and add it to the zone, and this is to compensate some kind of uh, a grounding, grounding, a grounding issue for the line. So the line will have different characteristic in case of face to ground. And that's why we have it even different, and we can set it over here, and this will be automatically added to our calculation. So it's a lot of things, but everything is possible to be done manually here and to understand each and everything. That's from the general page. So general page can do a lot of things, yes. You can even um, create a lot of... Uh, uh, scenarios and then you can save them like for example we just finished something and when we add it to the report we can have something like this we can say that this is for example zone zone test whatever you know and then we can we can just change it to a zone test that's because I'm in. and then when we finish, we can even repeat it, the same zone test. So we, from here itself now, we create our test plan, so we add it over here. We can repeat the same one, or we can even duplicate and change the setting over there. So we can just say duplicate, and then the other one we can edit over here, and then instead of, for example, uh, whatever it was face to face, now we can change the values to three phase, or let's say phase BC now, and then run the test again, and we have 
for example you can add different zone different phases whatever you need and then you can you know change the naming over here so also changing the name is very easy this is we can say phase b and c that's only an example so you can test and add whatever you need over here and that's only from the general base, not even going inside the automated uh, testing yet. Now, we have another thing, yes. Now, from the menu itself, we can do a ramping that uh, also manually, and then we can ramp the impedance similar to what I have done manually, but I'll just skip it for the time being. We have impedance three icons over here. Now, the first icon of the impedance is we call it easy impedance and this easy impedance is also to do verification similar to what we have done manually and that's the again we can constant the current choose the fault what we need and then we'll say that we'll come from out of the zone to inside the zones so we just specify the phase angle where we want to test like let's say we want to test at 90 degree and then which what you want to run let's say you want to run only r or X or Z itself. So Z will come when we are in the phase angle over there, but now since we are in the X, so we'll, 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 we'll ramp X. What you can say like, I have 80 degree, and then instead of ramping X or R, we can ramp now Z. So when we said we need to ramp Z, we are ramping actually for both values together, if you see, changing together. And and this is the beauty of it that we can we can do a lot of tests over here uh, by verifying the uh, the zone reach again manually over here <clears throat> and then of course if you want to time it over here you can just click over here the increment can be changed from this side say that i want to do it z i want to do it 0.001 which is milli uh, milli ohms so it depends whatever you need and everything is possible to be done. That is for the uh, first, uh, which is the easy impedance. And then also there are a lot of questions about changing the polarity. You know, instead of going from the phase, coming from the neutral, want to change that. And that's possible by clicking over here, changing the polarity to 180 degree. And if you have some results to save, again, you can save it over here and then you can view it on the uh, report view. And then we have the uh, impedance relay. Now the impedance here over here, since I have clicked this before, so, okay. What we'll have will pop up with this. <clears throat> and then we can choose which, which relay is uh, what we need to test with. So we can choose any kind of relay, like in ABB we have multi-relays, we have an Ariston multi-relays, and then we have, and the uh, SEA relays, multi relays, and it's etc. And then we can import the file or just write the setting over there. For example, let's say that we are going to do the B546, and then we can just directly scroll, uh, you know, scroll down and then change the change the numbers manually, or we can import. We can import the setting directly if it is when it, whatever type is like CSV, text file, X3, whatever you need. So when we have a, a file, we just just say, okay, I want to import the file. I have uh, maybe a file over here. Okay. So we have a lot of uh, files. For example, we just you know, pull up a file, all this thing comes over here, and then automatically the zone timing comes over here, which is matching, and then and then the test, we want to do it with normal RAM, pulse RAM, or binary search, or want to do shoot test for the timing, we just choose it over here, and then click yes, and the zones will come automatically. And then what you have to do is just put the lines where you want to do, you want to do it automatic, you want to do it, uh, I mean, I mean, the line set up automatic according to, let's say you want to do it according to a standard where it will go to line angle 0, 180 and 270, and then it can be set automatically for you. Or, or you want, this is, this is how it's being done. And then, or you want to do it by hand only. I mean, you can draw it 
from origin or whatever you need. So that is that. This is from origin. If you want, if you don't want that, again, you want to do it by hand. You can draw whatever combination you need, and this is how it's been done. So you can import those files, and you can easily, you know, do the testing of the zone reach as we have seen and we can add the timing together so by adding the timing how can we add the time here just click back to the relay configuration and then click show test and click yes and then put the points where you want to do the timing test and then you run if you want to run everything together you just click off the double play over here choose the phases choose the zones where you want to test and then choose search and shot and this means that you will test everything on the uh, whatever you have put lines over there and dots for the shoot test you will do all together and then we have another option here that will test all or failed if you have some fail because of something loose connection or anything or let's say you have tested today half and you need to complete tomorrow so then you can say all and test it so that's that's everything is possible over here now, if we run over here, of course, it will just do some. I want to show you only some some kind of uh, uh, reporting how it looks. So okay. So if you have some failure like that, then you can say run or retest, and you can or you can test everything uh, back from beginning. Now, since we add this test, so what is what's happened now to our test plan? When we go back to home page. We have now added zone reach test where we test only phase to phase and we can do the short test and then it will come under it and then we can even repeat from here not only that actually when we also look at the report oops, we can see because this is only one test i have done that's why there is uh, no more test Sorry, this is simulation mode. Always we have problem with this simulation mode. So simulation mode always doing the same. And then from there, actually, we could do a, a retest over there. So sorry for that. Let's start again. So from there we can, as I said, do, 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 do everything. Now, here again, I'm just opening again, and from here also we can do a generic, a generic, or we can do ourselves. So how we can do that? From here, generic. You just click over here with this moho, for example. Then we can choose uh, from down left, if face to face or fa face to face or face to ground or three face. Uh, the the uh, the, uh, the ohmic value. So let's say we are in phase to ground, and this is the view of the three phase, which is coming from here. And then from here we can even change it to only to view only one zone. So now from here we say that maybe my reach is five ohms. That's possible to change. The angle is maybe let's say 90. I'll just change it to just see that it is changing. And then if we have an offset. And this offset, you can make it positive or negative. And this is it's drawing here in the left side. If it is, if it is uh, positive, it will go up. If it is negative, it will go down. So if I said minus two, and then click again, and then it goes down minus two. If I said plus two, only two, and then click again over here, it will draw it as two up. So that is the that is the how it looks like. Like you can do it an offset or not. And then you can, uh, you know, put the timing of the zones. When you finish, you go to the line to line. It's the same thing. And then you scroll to zone two, zone three, and zone four. If it is on, you can say directions for all the reverse, and you can put the ohmic reach, the angle, and then the offset. And it's very easy to do the ohmic test. I mean, or sorry, the reach test of the uh, moho type. Moho type is very, very, very easy. And then you can have it something like this. And then again, you can search and do the same test. Now, the other thing is, when we go to generic, we have the quad. 
And this is something also everybody likes to understand and how to do it. And again, if we look at the picture in the left side, it will explain everything for you. So we have to set up the X and then the R, and then we have to specify the angle over here and specify the angle below. And this is all actually in the relay. So you can, you can easily know that. Now, let's say that we want to do this in, uh, one thing I maybe skipped in that one, which is when we go to phase two ground, there is a ground compensation. So for each zone, we can also do ground compensation. For example, if I'm in zone one, this is the grounding compensation, like I can make it one here. And then when I go zone two, I can make it three, because that is also possible to change. Uh, sorry, three, I said that. So it's possible to do it from each, for each uh, zone, we can put the grounding compensation. Uh, now let's draw the quad and see how it looks like. Now, again, we have to specify, as I said, the X and the R's. Now, when we specify the X over here, let's say it's five ohm, and my R value is like five ohm, just I want to just draw it. And then we have, we have this, and then we have those. Those are, I'll go step by step just to do it. First, we have to specify the line, line angle. So the line angle, like if it's 80, and that's specifying even how it looks like over here, if you see, in the beginning and then the end. And then, now, how much percent we go below, below the zero, or how much degree we go below the zero? Is it 22, which is by default, all the relays, but some relays we can set, like for example, if I want it only 15, then we can change it to 15 over here. Now this curve also is something that also can set up, some relays are setable and some relays are fixed. And again, that is, is it 30 degree after the 90 or let's say 20 or 40 degrees? So if I put it even 40 degree, it's changing over here. Now for the X and the R again, which is in the minus here over here, if I go and say like minus five, and then minus five here, which is usually they will be equal, and then we can have exactly the same what's written over here. Now we have done all of this, except now the blender over here, which is in this curve. And this is usually depending on the relay if we have blender or not, but usually if it's zero, it will be like straight line. If it is not zero, if like eight, for example, you'll have a curved line. And this is how to do it very, very easy. If by reading the the setting on the relay, you can even draw it. And then if you finish, of course, and put the grounding compensation, you can do also something good here that you can copy zone and then paste it in zone number two. And then maybe zone number two will have some specification, only you will change only these four numbers. So that will be easy for you. And then you can paste whatever. And then you can even make it forward or reverse or non-directional. And that's, when you finish and you have a conflict, which I have done now, then it will show you that you have a conflict. Both zones are the same because I just, uh, you know, put uh, the same zone timing. And then you'll have it something like this. Right. Of course, we need to correct the zone timing. And then that's, that's why we are doing this job. And then here, when we come to zone number two, you will see it's zero. That's why we have the conflict. And usually it's like, there should be something like millisecond 200. Okay, so now it's better. So that is how we will do. And again, then we can test by putting the lines and do the uh, reach test easily. And we have another method now of testing. So we are, have explained the general mode here, and then we have explained the easy impedance and this uh, this, uh, this is the uh, advanced impedance. Now we have the unknown zone. And this is very, very good tool for the people who is still using an old relay, which there is no, and those relays are not supporting any kind of export files. You can draw them, yes, or you can even check them automatically. Uh, and this is going to draw it for you. So when you click over here, uh, you just need to specify small things so that, let's say, to make it right. Here at this side, you have to just specify is it moho or quad so that it will be faster for you. And then 
Of course, we can test a three phase, whatever single phase, but we'll do a three phase. You can keep those values are they, as they are. If you know the maximum zone, then change it here. Otherwise, keep it the same. That can work with so many delays. And then in this search test, keep the same setting. And then list line means that it will test it in very list line to verify it, or more line. More line means it will do a lot of things that will take a little bit of time. Now, when we click yes, and we start the test, it will go at the 90 degree, zero degree line angle, and then it will draw directly as we have seen. So when we set, we press play, we just do simulation mode, and then I have just to click the, uh, just to click that because it looks at the time change. And if the time change there, it will try, uh, try to do the, uh, the, 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 the drawing itself. Now, because I just click three times, I don't want to go more. When it finished, because it will go to 30 ohm, nothing, it will go reverse. If there is something in the reverse, again, it will look at that reverse. I'll, not do, but I'll just do it very fast over here. And then it will stop and go for the line angle, and then it will do even the tilt angle. So it will it will automatically do everything. This is a little bit time, you know, this will take a little time. Now it will go to R and verify the R for each zone, and then after that it will go to line angle, and then after line angle, it will it will actually draw it perfectly, as I said, and it's a very good tool to test even the other relays. And that's because I just click on far away for zone one, so this is how it works, and then the thing is that you don't have here any pass or fail because there is no reference graph to check with. That's why we have it only set like that. Uh, that's from all from my side. And uh, if you have any other question, please do it now because uh, this is the thing. This is the last thing of the uh, of of our test. And I spoke that we have a meter test, which is measurement that I will speak to maybe later about it. I mean, in the next webinar with the other functions over here. Uh, if you have anything, please contact us. If you have any question, please uh, go ahead. Okay, guys. So that's all for the presentation. And uh, now we can move on to the question and answer uh, session. So for those who are leaving, please don't forget to answer or to fill up the, sur the survey that will pop up on your screen and that will really help us a lot in improving our future webinars. Um, so now let's move on to the questions, and I guess uh, we have some questions here soon. Uh, hello, you may be able to send the adjustment file short in the presentation. Uh huh. What, what do you? I'm not sure, sir. What is your? Uh, what slides do you refer to? Can you send us an email about this uh, to give us more details about what we want to have? And also, please, how can make simulation this program? Ah, sir, for, for this one, you need to download the PowerDB software and go to the um, to the software RTMS. So you can, when you open up the the uh, the the program for, for example, you choose to have or to simulate the SMRT, then you can simulate the this testing, the distance relay. So. Please download the PowerDB, sir. The, the latest one is available in the website of PowerDB, or you can also go to the website of Megger, then look for the SMRT or Preja equipment, and then in the software, you can download the free software or for the PowerDB Live. So you will be able to, to do the simulation for this really software. Okay, yes, sir. Uh, we will send you the email on how to download it. I will send you the link um, after I receive the uh, the details of your email address. Okay, so I guess that's all that we have. Uh, we don't have that much question. So yeah, I think we can conclude this this webinar for today. Uh, oh. So we have another. We have a new question here, sir. Is there any limit to the fault resistance measured 
No, there, there's no limit, sir. As long as you can measure the actual impedance actually of the line. So normally, what they do in measuring the actual impedance, they do the line impedance measurement. So uh, if you purchase our trucks, there is a uh, an application there to measure the actual uh, impedance of the line. So you can have the zero sequence and the positive sequence of impedance of the line. So there's no limit for, for the resistance of this one. Okay, so we have another question. Now I ask for test, how can test auto recloser with impedance? Oh, that, that would be another topic, sir. So we, we have some uh, primary injector to do the recloser testing, the timing of the auto recloser or the, uh, the the overcurrent of the auto recloser so you can have that as well. Sorry, Michael, I think he, he meant about the how to test the auto recloser with the breaker for the auto recloser function on the breaker i think auto recloser function on the breaker okay yeah yeah i think uh to test this function there are uh, two options you can use the breaker simulator uh connect to your store your uh, distance relay and then uh, because the important thing to testing uh, auto recloser is uh, we need uh, to to relay should have an indication the breaker status. So the the mostly for testing this, the we try to set uh, change the program program on the distal relay itself to in order to get the breaker status uh, indication. Or the second way we can connect to the breaker simulator. Some customer also they sometimes they connect directly the breaker to the relay distance relay and then with that condition you you, you can do the the distance relay uh, actually we also have the our smrt unit uh, have a, a four voltage the one ap application of uh, that voltage is to testing the breaker the authority of function whereas you can uh, connect three three voltage to the uh, line system line voltage and the uh, one Voltage channel you can connect to the bus voltage. So with that co hardware connection, you can also do the auto recloser function with the distance relay. Yeah. Okay. So his question is about how to test the distance relay auto recloser function. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So yeah, correct, correct. So they need to have the the input for the binary input for the breaker status so that right. we can. Simulate the breaker, close it off. Okay. So, guys, so if you have any further questions, you can also send us an email um, and we'll try to answer back. Okay. So, thank you so much, everyone, for attending this webinar and hope to see you again in our future webinars. We still have a lot of webinars, so stay tuned. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a good day and please stay safe. Thank you, Sumedi, and thank you, guys. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Michael. Great. Michael thank you, Bye -bye.